This film is brought to you by the National Office of Animal Health, NOAA, which is the organisation that represents the animal health industry. In it, we aim to help consumers explore some of the myths surrounding animal medicines in food production. You check the back of a package for the fat or sugar content, but when it comes to animal products, how much do you know about the animal's health and welfare? And with recent scandals about food safety and sourcing, people are becoming more and more interested about where their food is coming from. And in particular with farm animals, people want to know what sort of life the animal has had before it appears on our supermarket shelves. We want to know where they've been living. Are they being kept in a shed or are they free to wander about? Are they being treated kindly by the farmer? And what about their diets? Are they being fed with good natural produce? And then there's the question of health. Have the animals been sick? Have they been treated with any medicines? There seem to be quite a few misconceptions about the use of animal medicines and the impact, if any, that they might have on the consumer. Farm animals, just like humans, deserve to be protected from disease and treated and cared for when they're sick. The National Office of Animal Health wants you to find out how much the consumer knows about the use of animal medicines on farms. So they decided to ask you a few questions in a survey. Let's find out how much you knew. Growth hormones, they're still used on farms, aren't they? Wrong. 71% of consumers incorrectly believe that growth hormones are being used on British farms or were unsure. In fact, growth hormones have been banned throughout the European Union since 1988 and the ban is strictly in force. Vaccinations can actually harm consumers by getting into the food chain, can't they? Wrong again. 72% of respondents either believe that vaccines or other animal medicines can cause harm to consumers or they are unsure. The vaccines work by stimulating the animal's immune system against infectious disease. They never transfer into the food chain at any stage. Some other medicines leave residues, but permissible safety margins are huge and pose no danger to the public. Samples of animal products from the UK and abroad are constantly tested for these residues. The Veterinary Medicines Directorate reports the results, which are published regularly. Animal medicines are more necessary in intensive farming, aren't they? Well, 90% of respondents either agreed or were unsure. But the truth is, animals need protection from disease regardless of where they're reared. And they need treatment when they're sick. OK, animal use antibiotics. Don't they get into the food chain? Some people still think this, but no, they don't. The point of Noah's survey was to challenge assumptions about animal medicines, but we also wanted to find out what was on the top of your list of concerns about the food chain. Top of the list of concerns was animal living conditions, followed by hygiene and the additives used in food. Now this was followed by the impact of pesticides on health, what the animals ate and the impact of genetically modified food. The distance the food had travelled was an issue for some, as well as hygiene conditions on the farm. After this, vaccinations came in, while 10% of respondents said they had concerns about that. This was followed by the hygiene in the abattoirs, the uses of medicines to make sick animals better and to stop animals from becoming sick came bottom in the list of concerns. The good news is that most people are in favour of farm animals being treated with medicine to stop them getting sick, and medicine to help them get well when they are sick. The bad news is 13% of people are not happy about the way the food they buy is being produced and there are still a lot of misconceptions about how animal medicines are being used. We hope that this film has helped change just a few of those misconceptions. NOAA is committed to promoting responsible use in all types of medicines. We say that medicines should be used as little as possible but as much as necessary. Farm animals like two hour old Sydney here need a high standard of care and this includes access to medicines as and when he needs them. At the same time, keeping the food chain as safe as possible for the consumer.